Aquablation therapy in large prostates, 80 to 150 cc's for lower urinary tract symptoms due to BPH. Water 2 three-year trial results. Presentation and video by Dr. Kevin Zorn. Please find attached the other authors of the Water 2 study and video courtesy of Dr. Susan Fuller. The objective of our study was to determine three-year safety and efficacy outcomes of aquablation therapy for the treatment of men with symptomatic BPH and large volume prostates, those over 80 cc's up to 150 cc's in the single-arm prospective study. The study design included 101 men with moderate to severe BPH symptoms and prostate volumes measuring 80 to 150 cc's by transrectal ultrasound in a prospective multi-center international trial. The primary safety endpoints were looking at the occurrence or persistence of clavian dindo grade one or grade two or higher at the three month mark. These were measured against an objective performance criteria of 80% power. The primary efficacy endpoint was the reduction in IPSS score at three months. The baseline patient characteristics, the following table demonstrates the collective group mean age being 67.5 years, the mean prostate volume of 107 cc's, the fact that 83% of these men had a median lobe, the mean IPSS entering surgery of 23, the Qmax of 8.7 with a PVR of 131 cc's, we also calculated and compared the ejaculatory and erectile function in these patients. Looking specifically at those men with the use of BPH medications and anticoagulation, this table underlines the usage of those medical therapies entering surgery. We can see that in anticoagulation use, be it antiplatelets, aspirin, or other therapies, 42% of men were using these entering the treatment. With regards to standard alpha blocker, 5-ARI, or combination therapy, 73% of men had medical treatments entering the WATER2 study. Looking at the procedure operative data, as previously published, looking at the total operative time, that the resection time was only eight minutes and looking at the total operative time under an hour of 55 minutes for these very large prostates. With regards to irreversible severe complications, there was no reported erectile dysfunction. There was 15% of men with ejaculatory dysfunction being reported and de novo incontinence of only 2%. Herein, we now will overview the video of the procedure after having placed the transrectal ultrasound probe into the rectal space and docking with the bed arm piece to secure the transrectal ultrasound in place. The surgeon will then continue in the placement of the transurethral hand piece, the disposable hand piece which is mounted also with cystoscopy into the prosthetic fossa. Here we can see the surgeon moving and toggling so that the prostate is in center view in both axial and transverse planes so as to maximize full visualization of the prostate throughout the surgery. Here, intraeutral gel is placed followed by the very small and only disposable piece for the procedure, which is mounted with the cystoscope in view. And here we can see the surgeon gently places the scope through and then mounts it and docks it with the robotic handpiece. So both the ultrasound and the handpiece are fixed to the table. Here we can see the horizontal white lines, which represent the handpiece, followed by the retracting scope to the vera montanum. Thereafter, this is a view 
looking into the bladder where the side firing horizontal water jets are being observed to ensure that the planes are in correct uh, angles. Thereafter, this really is the crucial point of the surgery where the surgeon will designate the predetermined area to treat of the prosthetic fossa. From this point, the surgeon will then select the area of treatment within the prostate cavity, which will be treated on the pass. It is very important to note that the maximal resection depth is up to 2.4 centimeters. So here the surgeon is, is looking throughout the prostate to design the desired treatment for that pass. The selective angles and depth and width can all be calculated using the sterile field, as you can see on the top right insert of the surgeon, designing the area of treatment prior to therapy. Here now looking at the transverse view, the surgeon can then make designations of the medial lobe, the depth of treatment, and the orange area, which could be seen now, is the one the two centimeters in front of the vera montanum to ensure the butterfly cut and preservation of ejaculatory function. The depth can also be tailored for every prostate so that throughout the therapy, we maximize treatment. Here now begins the therapy, which is the simple pressing of a pedal and the robot is executing the procedure. This is a video to be sped up at five times normal speed to allow, allow us to observe what is being treated. So the water jet is coming initially from the bladder neck and retracting slowly toward the vera montanum. There'll be a stop approximately one centimeter right here and to which only one side of the prostate is being treated at the apex. This is the butterfly cut so that there is no firing of the water jet toward the vera montana. The water jet retracts and then treats the contralateral side similarly without any damage to the vera montana. At this point, the treatment is completed on the first pass and a second pass will be done to clean up some of the fluffy tissue and allow to have a cleaner resection of the fossa. So at this point, the equipment is still in place, the ultrasound, the cystoscope, and the handpiece are all docked and calibrated, and simply a redesigning and a repassing of the same area with the same water jet so as to allow for optimal tissue removal and to have a much cleaner surface of the surgical cavity. So again, the treatment is going at a 180 degree angle from one side to the other, all the way back about one centimeter before the vero, and then an ipsilateral pass that's going on the left side. We retract again to the vero and then retreat on the other side. Here, the hand piece is removed and you clearly see the huge defect already with passage of fluid. And what will happen immediately after is the surgeon will replace a resectoscope with a Tumi syringe so as to irrigate out the remaining clots. Here we can see for the water two trials, the catheter tension device, CTD, which would allow for a hands-free resection without any cautery, without any electrocautery or thermal injury. This traction device would be placed over the inserted three-way catheter and to allow for a certain amount of tension to be placed, to which on the left, you can see the affixation to the catheter, and on the right side of this white device to be placed at the pubic bone to, gout, to give counter traction. It's been noted that this was used for the entire cohort in the WATER2 trial, and the result in terms of transfusion was a 6% transfusion in all patients in this very large prostate, again, without any cautery. It's important to note that this technique has been discontinued since late 2019 with now the use of focal cautery using standard terp loop to ensure good hemostasis prior to the catheter removal. Here we can show a small concept 
of the idea that once the aquablation is complete, we can insert not just the sheath and tumi irrigate out clot, but also to place a electrothermal loop that we are all familiar with to remove any of the fluffy tissue, particularly attentive to the bladder neck at the five and seven o'clock positions where the entering vascular supply is for the prostate. And then using selective cautery to look for the arterial pulsatile bleeding in those areas, that ensuring much better hemostasis prior to placing in the catheter without the use of any CTD or continuous traction device as we had in the past. And in doing this with a recent publication of over 2,000 men, the transfusion rate in all comers was less than 1% for a mean prostate size of 87 cc's. The following video will summarize the experience in the WATER2 trial, wherein a standard sheath is placed, standard TUMI is being used to simply irrigate out any clot or fluffy tissue. And immediately the catheter was placed under ultrasound guidance, followed by the CTD. So the purpose of this video is to complement our three-year published WATER2 trial where this technique was used. Here, the video shows now the loop in current technique where simple resection of that top layer fluffy tissue at the bladder neck is performed and thereby creating an environment that we're all, all used to as urologists to identify those five and seven o'clock pulsatile bleeds, which are usually in our experience, the culprits to the significant bleeders that lead to transfusion because the bleeding occurs below the balloon of the catheter and therefore continues to bleed without much imp improvement despite the traction. So here, clearly, our standard areas of bleeding are att attended to with electrocautery and thereafter, the catheter is placed with a three-way system along with continuous bladder irrigation. 30 cc's are placed in the balloon. And in current practice, no continuous traction or significant traction is used. Simple drainage with irrigation. Three year results after looking and having our recent publication it is clear to show that the data demonstrated at the two-year mark is mimicking that which we see at the three-year mark and that the IPSS improvement was significantly dropped by 16.7 and sustained to the three-year mark. Similarly, the quality of life, the QMAX improvement of 9.8 milliliters per second and the significant improvement across all parameters are well seen, including post-void residual of down to 86 cc's. More specifically, the freedom from any medication for BPH was 94% at three-year mark and 97% free from any surgical reintervention for BPH at three years. Conclusion, with the recent BGUI publication of the three-year follow-up, Aquablation therapy is safe and effective in men with large prostates with the primary safety and efficacy endpoints achieved at three months and maintained to three years. In conclusion, image-guided, robotic-executed aquablation produces consistent clinical outcomes regardless of the prostate size or shape. Thank you for your attention.